Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel! If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. If you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun! For today's tutorial, we're making a peplum tube top. For this dainty make, we've got a textured sedge section, a symmetrical peplum, and that's pretty much it! We kept it simple for this modern beginner friendly make, so if you're new to the craft, this one's for you! Speaking of, if you're looking for a beginner friendly make, or something a little trickier, you are in the right place! We have hundreds of crochet tutorials and patterns for every skill level, with more dropping weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload! Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't! Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday! Now it's time to get on the show, so without further ado... For this project, any Category 4 yarn will work! But I used a total of 430 grams of yarn, and that's 1,000 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5 and 6.5 millimeter hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any 999 plus order, and enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us the last time you laughed so hard you cried. Mine was only a few days ago, and that was when I was hearing an AI Patrick Starr sing a Kirk Franklin song. Details for the giveaway down below. We are using 4 stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet. half double crochet, and double crochet! This tutorial is made for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started! Getting this top started, we're all going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Then we're all going to grab our 5mm hook, and start off by making a chain the height that we'd like for our top band to be. Now I'd like for mine to be roughly an inch or 2 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain 5. Now that we have our chain, we're going to get started on our first row, which is a slip stitch row. So block off that last chain and do a chain 1. Now that chain 1 does not count as a stitch, that is our turning chain. And into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a slip stitch. So into that chain, we're going to insert. We should have two loops on our hook, then we're going to yarn over and gently pull through both of those loops on our hook. So pull through one and then also pull through two. There's our first slip stitch, let's do another. Into that following chain, insert your hook, yarn over, and pull through two. And we're going to continue doing this, making our way all the way down, remembering not to tug too tightly after every stitch, otherwise the following row can be a little too tight to work into. Our row one is complete. Now getting started on our row two, it's going to be another slip stitch row, but now within the back loops. So we're all going to chain one, that's our turning chain, and flip our work. Now finding the last stitch from our previous row, we're going to insert into that back loop, yarn over, and gently pull through everything on our hook. Let's do that again, into that following stitch, insert into that back loop, or the loop that's furthest away from us, yarn over, and pull through everything. And that's it! We're going to continue on with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of the row, we're going to chain one, flip our work, and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again. We're just going to continue on with this row until we have a portion that can stretch around the widest part of our bust, making sure that we are stretching it as if we're wearing it. Now the amount of rows that we are going to do is going to be an odd number that is in multiples of 3. Once we have that all finished up, I will meet you back! Alrighty, so I am back. My top band length is all finished up. I have a total of 123 rows, and my length is roughly 18 inches or 46 centimeters unstretched, because remember it does have some stretch to it as well. What we're going to do from here is fold our work in half, and then we're going to seam it all together. So we folded our work in half, and we have inserted our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel, and what we're going to do from here is yarn over and pull through both of those loops to connect them all together. And now we're going to do an outside loop slip stitch seam to make it look like another back loop slip stitch row. So we're all going to start by finding that first stitch into the front panel, and insert only in through that front loop, or the loop that's nearest to us, and then into the back panel, we're going to insert only into that back loop, or the loop that's farthest away from us. Once we have those three loops on our hook, we're all going to yarn over, and pull through all three. Let's do that again. 
into that next stitch, insert into that front loop, then into the next stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop, then yarn over, pull through all three, and continue this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. Alright, so we are back, and we have just finished up our seam. Now we're going to get started on our single crochet row along the edge so that we can start to fill in the top portion. So right after we have finished up our seam, we're going to do a chain one. Then put one single crochet into every side row. So let's all start by finding our first side row. This raised row is mine right here. I'm going to find that top loop, insert my hook, and insert with a single crochet. But if you're like me, you should have a tail end along here, and I do not want to weave that in later, so I'm just going to place that over my hook. And now, single crochet around everything. Let's do that again. Into my following side row, which is this divot right here, I'm going to find that top loop, insert my hook with one single crochet, and again, this raised row is my following side row, so find that top loop, insert with one single. This is my following side row, which is this divot, find that top loop, and insert with one single. And now from here, continue with one single crochet into every side row, making our way all the way around. Now we should have the same amount of single crochets as rows that we did for the top band, so for me, a total of 123. And then once we made our way all the way around, slip stitch into that chain space. Once we've slip stitched into the chain space, try on our piece and make sure that everything is fitting nicely. This single crochet row is going to be as wide as this portion can stretch. So if it's a little bit too tight, reduce some stitches with a looser grip, or if it's too loose, reduce some stitches with a tighter grip. Alright, so our single crochet row is all finished. Everything is fitting quite nicely, and now we're going to get started on our sedge stitch. So from where we're at, we're all going to chain one and flip. Now getting started on the first sedge stitch of every row, it's going to be a half double crochet and double crochet into the same stitch. So right after we've done a chain one and flipped our work, we're going to yarn over preparing for a half double crochet. Now into that first available stitch that we have, now we want to make sure that we're not inserting it into that slip stitch stitch because it will look like an extra stitch for us, but just into the last single crochet that we did from our previous row, we're going to insert with one half double. So insert, yarn over, pull through three, and a double crochet. So to do a double, we're going to yarn over into that same stitch, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. Now that is our first sedge stitch. Now all of the other sedge stitches that we are going to be doing is going to be a single half double double into one stitch now. Now what we're going to do from here is skip the following two stitches and then into the following a single half double and double. So into there with a single crochet, into that same stitch with a half double, and then into that same stitch with a double crochet. That is our second set. We should have one, two sets so far. Let's do this again. After every set, we're going to be skipping the following two stitches because the half double and double crochet from our previous set will be counting as those two stitches. Now, if you work into there, we will be accidentally increasing, so we don't want to do that. So skip one, skip two, into the next with a single, into the same with a half double, and then into the same with a double. And that's it. We're just going to continue to do our sedge stitch all the way down until we have two stitches left. All right, so we've made our way all the way around with our first sedge stitch row, and now we're going to close it off with one half double crochet into the last stitch. So we're all going to yarn over, and into that last available stitch, we're all going to insert with one half double crochet. Then from here, our first sedge stitch row is finished, so we're going to slip stitch into that chain space that we made when we got started on this row, chain one, and flip our work. So into that chain space that we made when we got started on this row, we're going to insert, yarn over, pull through everything. Now remember that that slip stitch is not a stitch. That's just to connect the beginning to the end of our row. From here, we're going to chain one and flip our work. Now from here, it's basically going to be a repeat of our previous row because we aren't going to be doing any increases or decreases. So let's just get started on together. Now our first sedge stitch is always going to be a half double and double crochet into the same stitch. So yarn over into that first stitch, which should be the top of the half double crochet from our previous row, not into the top of that slip stitch. We're going to insert with a half double and then into that same stitch with a double crochet. Now after our first sedge stitch, we're then going to always skip the following two stitches and then into the next with a single half double double. So there's a single into that same stitch with a half double and once more into that same stitch with a double crochet. Now we should all have two sedge stitches for this row so far. Now we are always going to be skipping our following two stitches and then a sedge stitch set into that following stitch 
And just as a fun fact, we should always be doing our sedge stitches into previous rows single crochet to get the texture that we want. So we can tell that the stitch that we're about to work into is a single crochet because it's lower than the other two stitches. So skip one, skip two, into the next with a single, into the same with a half double and a double, and repeat this and I will meet you guys back when we all have two stitches left. All right, so we are back. We have made our way all the way around with our sedge stitch row. Now we're gonna close it off the same way that we did our previous row or our first sedge stitch row, which is just a half double crochet into the last stitch. So we should all have two stitches left and all we're gonna do is yarn over and half double crochet into the last stitch from our previous row. And now we're going to connect it. So slip stitching into that chain space that we made when we started off the row, insert, pull through everything, chain one and flip our work, making sure that we are flipping our work after every row and then continue to repeat this row with absolutely no increases and no decreases. Now we're just going to continue to repeat this row until we have a top portion the length that we'd like. So I would suggest once when we have a few rows in, we're gonna try our piece on and continue on with our sedge stitches until this is roughly one inch past our bust or where our underwire would be. And then I will meet you back right after an odd number Suzette stitch row. So making sure that we're not counting that first single crochet row as a row. And then I'll meet you guys back so we can get started on the waistband. Alrighty, so we are back. We have just finished up the total length for our top portion. Now I have a total of 21 rows and that's counting from my first said stitch row, not that single crochet row. And my total height, including the band, is roughly seven and a half inches or 19 centimeters. Now from here, we're gonna get started on the waistband. So right after we have slip stitched into the beginning of the row, we're all going to make a chain the length that we'd like for the waistband to be. I'd like for mine to be fairly tiny, just about a half an inch or a centimeter. So I'm gonna start by making a chain three. And now that we have our chain, we're going to do a slip stitch row. So we already know how to do this. Just as a refresher, we're going to block off that last chain and do a chain one. Into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, insert with a slip stitch, and continue with one slip stitch into every chain. And now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, we're now going to need to connect it into the base. So we're all going to start by finding our following available stitch into the base. Now this is mine right here. This is the top of my half double crochet from my previous row. I'm going to insert in through there yarn over and pull through everything. Now that slip stitch does not count as a stitch, that's just to connect our row. Now let's get started on the following row, so slip stitch into that following stitch into the base. Still does not count as an actual stitch, that's just to work our way up and flip our work. Then from here, one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, so we already know how to do that. Just find that first stitch from our previous row, not into those two slip stitches that we just did into the base. Insert into that back loop, pull through and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Then at the end of the row, we're going to chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again, and I'll meet you back at the base. And now that we're back at the base, we should have one, two, three rows nearly finished, and we're just gonna connect it into the base together once more. So just like how we did for our row one, find that next available stitch into the base, insert with a slip stitch. And now that slip stitch does not count as a stitch, that's just to connect. Then work our way up to the following row by slip stitching into that next available stitch into the base. Still does not count as a stitch. Flip our work and then repeat. So put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. From here, all we're gonna do is continue to repeat our two previous rows until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, I'll meet you back so we can seam everything together. Alrighty, so we are back. I've just made my way all the way around with my slip stitch rows for my waistband and now we're going to seam it together. This is going to be the same seam that we did for the top band. So making sure that our work is flipped right side out, meaning the seam that we have for the top band is along the outside since it does look like another back loop slip stitch row. Then we're gonna insert our hook into the first stitch into the front and into the back panel. Now we should already know how to do this. So we're just going to do this once. We're going to pull our working yarn through and start by finding that first stitch into the front panel, insert into that front loop, first stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop, then yarn over and pull through all three and continue this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. So now that our waistband is finished, we're now going to single crochet along the bottom of our waistband so we can get started on the peplum portion. So we should all be along the outside. We're all going to chain one and put one single crochet into every side slip stitch row the same way that we did for the top band. We should end up with the same amount of stitches as rows that we had for our slip stitch row. So, so far all of our rows should have had the same amount of stitches, so 123 for me. And when we make our way all the way around that single crochet row, try on your piece just to make sure that everything is fitting nicely. 
If this single crochet row is a little bit too tight, again, redo some stitches with a looser grip, and then I'll meet you guys back to get started on the peplum. All right, so we are back. We have just finished up our single crochet row along the bottom of our waistband, and before we get started on the length of our peplum, we're going to need to insert our stitch markers. So what we're all going to do is first, start by inserting our stitch marker into our middle stitch. So where our hook is, or our working yarn, is going to be the side of our piece, and the other stitch marker that we're about to insert will be on the other side. So since I have a total of 123 stitches, I inserted my stitch marker into the 62nd stitch because that is my one middle stitch. Everyone should have one middle stitch because we have a total of odd number of stitches. Now from there, we're going to need to find our middle stitch markers in between our working yarn and our middle stitch marker that we just inserted our stitch marker into. So taking the amount of stitches that we have from the first stitch that we have on this side of our hook, all the way across, making sure that we're counting our middle stitch marker stitch, we're going to be inserting our stitch marker into our middle stitch. Now, since I have a total of 62 stitches from my first single crochet over to my stitch marker, I will have two middle stitches, and that's going to be the same for everyone else that has an even number of stitches as well. If you have an odd number, you will have just one middle stitch, but no matter if we have one middle stitch or two, that's fine as well. So since I have two middle stitches, I've inserted my stitch marker into my 31st and 32nd stitch. Those are my two middle stitch markers, and I did the same thing on the other side as well. Now from here, we're gonna switch out our five millimeter hook to our six and a half millimeter hook, and now we're gonna get started on the length of our peplum. So getting started on the length of our peplum, we're all going to start by making a chain from where our bottom band is at to about where our belly button is. So for me, I need roughly two and a half inches or eight centimeters, so I'm gonna start by making a chain eight and making sure that we did switch out our hook to our six and a half millimeter as well. Now that we have our chain, we're all gonna get started on our first row, which is going to be a half double crochet row. So block off that last chain and do a chain two. Now that chain two does not count as a stitch, and for every odd number, we're going to get started on a row with an increase. So yarn over and insert our hook into that chain that we blocked off, or the third chain from our hook, with two half double crochets. So into that chain, we're going to insert with one, half double crochet, and then into that same chain with a second half double crochet. And from here, put one half double crochet into the rest of our chains. Now that we've put one half double crochet into every chain, we're now back at the base and we're gonna be connecting it into the base. So all we're gonna do is find that next available stitch and insert with a slip stitch. Now it may be a little bit difficult because the six and a half may be a little bit too big for our single crochets that we just did. So if you wanna switch out to your five millimeter hook, but only to connect it, that's fine as well. So I'm just going to slip stitch to connect our row one. That does not count as a stitch, that's just to connect it. And then we do need to work our way up to the following row as well. So into that following stitch into the base, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through everything with another slip stitch that also does not count as a stitch, that's just to connect. And then getting started on our following row, we're going to flip our work and put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. So yarn over into that first stitch, insert into that back loop, pull through with a half double, let's do that again. Yarn over into that following stitch, insert into that back loop with another back loop half double. Then continue with one back loop half double crochet into every stitch to reach the end of the row. We are back and we have just finished up our first two rows. Now let's just get started on the following row. So we're gonna chain two and flip our work. And remember, like I said, getting started on every odd number row, we're gonna start it with an increase. So this is gonna start with an increase of two back loop half doubles. So yarn over and into that first stitch's back loop, insert with an increase. So there's one, and then into that same back loop with a second, and then put one back loop half double crochet into the rest of our stitches. We are back and we now have one, two, three rows all finished. Now we're gonna connect it into the base. Now connecting our peplum into the base is going to be done just a little bit differently because we want this to ruffle out just a little bit. So what we're gonna do when we're connecting our row into the base is finding that previous stitch that our last row was worked into so that stitch will be occupied and we're gonna be inserting our hook into that stitch instead of the next available stitch like we how we did for the previous row. So into that occupied stitch, we're going to insert our hook in through there, yarn over, pull through everything with another slip stitch that's just to connect. Then to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next available stitch into the base with a slip stitch. Then from here, flip our work and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. 
getting started on our following odd number row, chain two, flip our work. Start that following row off with an increase of two back loop half doubles, and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, and I'll meet you back at the base just once more. All right, so we are back. We should all have one, two, three, four, five rows nearly finished. Now we're just gonna connect it into the base together. So just like how we connected our previous row, we're gonna be inserting our hook into that stitch into the base that our previous row was worked into, so into that occupied stitch. So into there, I'm going to insert my hook. Again, it might be a little difficult with a slip stitch. Now that slip stitch still does not count as a stitch. And then in order to work our way up to the following row, just find that next available stitch, insert with a slip stitch that also does not count as a stitch, that's just to connect it, flip our work, and then repeat our two previous rows. And I will meet you guys back once we reach our middle stitch marker stitch. Now for those of you that just had one middle stitch, I will meet you guys back along the bottom when we're worked into that middle stitch. Or for those of us that have two middle stitches, I will meet you guys back along the base when we're worked into our first middle stitch. Alrighty, so we are back. We have made our way all the way down until we have reached our stitch marker. And now from here, we're going to basically repeat everything that we just did here, but instead of increases at the beginning of every odd number row, we're gonna be doing decreases. So for those of us that have two middle stitches, we're going to slip stitch into our following stitch marker stitch, and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch the same way that we normally would. And then I will meet everyone back, because for those of you that have one middle stitch, you should already be along the bottom. I'll meet everyone back so that we can do a decrease together. So everyone should now be along the bottom of our piece. Now from here, we're going to do our following row, which is a decrease row. So since we're along the outer edge, we're always going to chain two, and we're all going to do our first decrease together. So yarn over and insert your hook into that first stitch, into that back loop, pull through and into that second stitch's back loop, and pull through for a total of four loops on our hook. Then from here, we're gonna yarn over and pull through all four, and that is our decrease. For the rest of the row, put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, and connect it into the base the same exact way that we've been doing it this entire time. Then from here, all we're gonna do is every even number row is going to be one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, so when we're working our way out, and then when we're working our way back up, we're gonna start our row, which is an odd number row with a decrease of two back loop half double crochets, just like how we did right here, and then finish off the row with one back loop half double crochet into the rest of our stitches. We're gonna make sure that we're connecting it into the base the same way that we've been doing this entire time until we are worked into our following stitch marker stitch, which was our middle stitch. Once we are, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I will meet you back. Alrighty, so we are back. We have made our way all the way across until we worked into our middle stitch marker stitch. We did do a chain up of one and cut, and now we're just going to repeat everything we did here on the other side. So just to show you guys, this is what the peplum should be looking like. It should come to a really nice point and work our way back up. And now we're going to be inserting our same six and a half millimeter hook into the same stitch that our middle stitch marker is in. So just to show you, I inserted my hook into my same stitch marker stitch that we just worked into for our front panel. And now we're going to repeat everything that we did here on the other side. So just get this side all finished up and then I'll meet you guys back so we can seam it all together. All right, so we are back. We have just finished up both the front and the back panel of our peplum and now we're going to seam everything together. So first things first, we're going to make sure that our work is flipped wrong side out meaning all the seams that we have for the top band and the waistband are now going to be along the inside because this is going to be a single crochet seam and we want this to be on the inside when we flip it right side out. Then we're gonna be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. And just to do the first one, we're all gonna start by finding that first stitch into the front panel, insert, first stitch into the back panel, insert, and if you're like me, you'd like to weave in your tail ends as you go, place your tail end over your hook, and single crochet around everything. Let's do this again. Into that next stitch into the front panel, insert, next stitch into the back panel, insert, and single crochet, and that's it. We're gonna continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into, and when we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat on the other side. All right, so now that everything is all seamed up, we are all done. Last thing we're going to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope y'all enjoyed the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch you on the next one. Bye.